This is it, a new version of Airflow is available, the Airflow 3.1, and in this video, you will discover everything you need to know about it. My name is Martin Merti, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling instructor on Udemy, and if you don't want to miss anything about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, that will help me a lot, and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So let's dive into Airflow 3.1. All right, let's begin by what you can see on the Airflow UI. And the first thing that you may notice right now is that you have up to 10 favorite DAGs. Indeed, now you can bookmark some of the most important DAGs that you always want to have access from the Airflow homepage. To bookmark a DAG, it's pretty simple. You go on the DAGs page and then either you click right here to bookmark the DAG or you can click on the DAG and click on favorite DAG. So let's do that. And if you go back on the homepage, you can see here the DAG and obviously if you click on it, you land on the corresponding DAG right away. This is super useful if you have a ton of DAGs and you want to focus on the most important ones and have a quick access to them. In addition, you can monitor the pool slots. Remember that Airflow has a pool, by default it has 128 slots, which means you can run up to 128 tasks at the same time. You can increase that number, decrease that number, you can create additional pools. And if you don't know about pools, I strongly recommend you to take a look at that feature. But that being said, you can monitor all the pool slots right from the home page, as you can see right here. We have 130 pools slots in total, 129 are available, and one slot is in the running state, which means one task is running. And if you wonder which task is running, well, guess what? You just click on manage pools, then you land on the pools view, and here you can see all of your pools. But most importantly, if you click right here, you can access all the task instances corresponding to the given state here running. So keep in mind, if you have some tasks in the queued or in the deferred states and so on, you just need to click on the corresponding state in the pool, and then you get all the task instances related to that state right away. Again, that will save you a lot of time. Now, let me show you another cool feature, which is the multi-language support in Airflow 3.1. So if you go on user and then select language, well, guess what? Now you can translate your Airflow instance in the language that you want. So for example, I'm French, maybe you can hear that. So if I click on French, then I'm able to see Airflow in French. And obviously there are many, many languages, maybe not all of them, but feel free to contribute to Airflow so you can add your own language right here. So if you don't feel comfortable with English, well now you can use your own language. Next, I would like to show you some of the features that were in Airflow 2 but weren't in Airflow 3, at least at the launch. So let's take a look at those pretty useful features, honestly. If we go to the DAGs, now you can delete your DAG again, you know, like before. So if you click on delete DAG, your DAG, at least the metadata of your DAG will be removed from the Airflow meta database. And then if you click on your DAG and let's take a look at this DAG run, you can access the task instances like before, but you can delete the task instances as well. So now you have, you know, this small icon to delete the task instances like in Airflow too. And obviously you can do the same for the DAG runs. So if we take a look at the DAG runs right here, you can delete the corresponding DAG runs that you want by clicking on the same icon. So that's really cool to see that back in Airflow 3.1. If you remember in Airflow 3, you are able to expand or shrink the views by doing that. But it was not possible to have the left view in full screen. Indeed, you had only the possibility to you know, shrink the details page as much as that. But now in Airflow 3.1, let's say you are on the graph view and you want to have the full screen for the graph view, you just click on that new button right here and that collapses the detail page and you have your DAG in full screen. So this is pretty cool. Also, I don't know about you, but one chart that I love a lot and was missing in Airflow 3.0 was the Gantt chart. And guess what? The Gantt chart is back, but in a different place. Indeed, if you go back on the grid view, if you click on a DAG run, by default, you will see the Gantt chart. So right here, you have the Gantt chart of this DAG run. So you know that Get Astronauts was the slowest task, and then you have Print Astronaut Craft. Same thing, if you click on a different DAG run, you will obtain a different Gantt chart. Remember that the Gantt chart is useful to spot any bottlenecks that you have 
in your DAG. So for example, if you have a task that it is very slow, you will be able to see that in the gun chart. And so maybe you need to optimize that task so your DAG can complete faster. Another view that was missing as well was the calendar view. Maybe you don't know the calendar view, but I love that one. So if you click on your DAG and then go to the calendar, you can monitor on every hour how many runs did you get and also how many were in the failed or success states, which is super useful. Obviously, you can go to different months and you can switch to the daily view if you want to have one square per day. So this is up to you, but the beauty of the calendar is that it helps you to spot any patterns that you have in the execution of your DAGs. For example, you will be able to spot if you are getting more DAG runs in failure at a specific day, let's say on Monday, or maybe over the weekends. And so it might worth to take a look at what's going on on those specific days. Last but not least, you can filter on the failed runs only. So you see here that for that specific hour, I got one DAG run in failure and the squares that you see with that color correspond to the DAG runs that are scheduled to run. While we are speaking about useful features, another one is that if you go to the code view, now you have this little additional information, which is the parse duration of your DAG. So obviously it might be a very nice metric to monitor because if your DAG takes a lot of time to be parsed, there may be some optimization that you can make. Okay. Also, you have access to another field, which is if you click on a specific DAG run, the triggering user name, which means now when you trigger a DAG run, by default, the username, the Unix username will be attached to that DAG run. And so you know who has triggered a specific DAG run. So for example, here, the account is anonymous. If I click on it, I can see that those two DAG runs were executed, were triggered by the anonymous user. But obviously in the real world, you will have different user accounts. And so you will know who has triggered a given DAG. And obviously you can access this information in your DAG code as well, as shown right here. And keep in mind, the triggering username is also available if a DAG is backfilled. A last point about the Airflow UI, while I was recording that video, as you can see, now we have new colors on the Airflow UI. I don't know about you, but I prefer that version than the previous one. You know, colors is a matter of preferences. But now that's it for the UI. I would like to dive into the most interesting features of Airflow 3.1. And one of them is definitely the human in the loop operators. Let me show you that. Imagine that you have the following data pipeline that fetches a ticket, then sends the ticket to LLM, and then the LLM returns an answer that you need to check before sending that answer to the user. And that's exactly the goal of the human in the loop operators to allow human in the loop workflows. For example, here, the check the answer task will be a human in the loop operator. And so as soon as the DAG is at this task, it pauses until you approve or reject the answer. And if you approve the answer, then the DAG continues to run and the send the answer task is executed. Otherwise, that task is skipped. So again, that's the beauty of the human in the loop operators. You have a bunch of operators that you can use so that whenever you need to have a human that checks the output of a task, you can do that. Now, let me show you that in action. The first operator among the human in the loop operators is the approval operator. And it is the easiest one to understand. You basically have to approve or reject something, the output of a task. So for example, here we have three tasks in this data pipeline. We have the upstream task that returns the following message that we will use in the approval operator. You can see here the body comes from that task. So the body is templatable. But most importantly, you can see here a default value, which is approve. And by default, your operator will time out at some point. And if it times out, then the default value approve will be selected. You can default that to known so that your task will fail. Then we have a subject that you will see displayed on the Airflow UI and a param that it is optional that you can add just to give some inputs to your task. So here it could be the rating of the answer that your LLM gives you. And finally, we have another task at the end just to show you the output of the human in the loop operator. So again, the goal of the approval operator is to approve or reject something. In that case, whatever the upstream task 
returns. And keep in mind, whenever you use a human in the loop operator, there are two parameters that you always define, the subject and the options. You don't see the options parameter here, but you will see that in another operator. That's because with the approval operator, the options are already predefined for you. Enough talking, let's take a look at the DAG and run it to see what happens. So if we trigger that DAG and wait a little bit, you can see that this approval task is deferred. And that's the beauty of the human in the loop operators. They are deferred by default, which means they don't take a worker slot while they are waiting for you to check whatever you need to check. So at this point, you can see that the DAG is waiting for me. Print result is not getting executed until I approve what we have in the approval task. So for that, you just click on the task and then you go to required actions. And here is the message that comes from the upstream task. Then I can give a rating here if I want, but you can see here that I need to click on approve or reject. Also, you can go to browse and then required actions. If you have many human in the loop operators, you can see all the required actions that you have to take right here as well as the history. So let's go back to the task and click on approve and wait a little bit and you will see that print result will be executed. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Let me show you another human in the loop operator and this one is the human in the loop branch operator. So as you can guess, the idea here is that with the human in the loop branch operator, you will have to pick one or multiple tasks manually okay it's up to you to choose which tasks you want to execute based on the output of the upstream task so let's do that again we're going to trigger this data pipeline and wait a little bit and you will see that this task is now deferred again i click on it and then i go to required actions and you can see here that for example i have this budget and then I need to select the funding proposals to approve for this quarter. And I have multiple options that I can choose from. For example, let's say I want to approve the marketing budget as well as the training budget. And then I click on respond and that will trigger the corresponding tasks. So let's click on that, wait a little bit, and you can see that training and marketing have been successfully executed. Again, if you wonder about the code, let's take a look at that. So this time it's a little bit more complex. We have the human in the loop branch operator that comes from the human in the loop package. And then we have the task ID, the subject, which is required. Then the body that comes from the upstream task right here. And then the options, which is a required parameter. And again, I have to approve the different budgets that come from the budget categories as defined right here. And then I have the option mapping that map to the different tasks, downstream tasks that I have. You can see here the loop that does that. And finally, multiple, which is an optional parameter in case I want to be able to select multiple options and not only one. Okay, so there are two other operators that I won't show you, but let's take a look at the human in the loop entry operator. And if you take a look at the code, so this one is more like if you want to have a form and give some inputs, and then you have the human in the loop operator, which is the base class for all the other human in the loop operators that you saw so far. And this one, again, is a little bit more flexible. And you can see here an example to define the execution timeout of your operator. So just keep in mind, you have four human in the loop operators, the approval operator, the human in the loop branch operator, the human in the loop operator, and the human in the loop entry operator. I strongly recommend you to take a look at the documentation, but now you can have human in the loop workflows. Another feature that I think you will love is the synchronous DAG execution. Indeed, now there is a new API endpoint in the Airflow REST API that allows you to wait for a DAG to complete. And not only it allows you to wait, but also to get the output of that DAG as well as its status. So concretely, with the following DAG, you will trigger it using this endpoint, DAG runs, you pass the DAG ID of the DAG you want to trigger, and then you will use the new API endpoint wait. You give the DAG ID and the DAG run ID that you got from the previous endpoint. And just like that, this API endpoint will return only once the DAG run has been successfully executed or at least has a status failed, canceled, or success. And you will get the output of the DAG as well. In that case, the output of the last task, so the answer. The last feature that I think is important for you to know 
is that finally in Airflow 3.1, you can embed React apps in the Airflow UI. So as you can see right here, this little box with the two buttons and I'm a plugin, this is a React app, which means truly you can customize Airflow as much as you want. You can even add new features to it. For example, I know someone who has created a plugin to take bulk actions on DAGs, which is pretty amazing. If you wonder how to do that, it's pretty simple. You just need to create a Python file corresponding to your plugin, put it into the plugins folder, and then you need to import the Airflow plugin class as well as the fast API class. Then you instantiate a fast API object here with the variable app, and then you define some routes. For example, this is the route that I'm using right now, slash dagmanager.js, that returns my React app. And finally, at the bottom, I create a DAG Manager plugin class that inherits from Airflow plugin. I need to specify the name of my plugin as well as some of its components, here an API endpoint and the React app. You can see those two components with the configurations as shown right here. So this is the app config to get the REST API endpoint and this corresponds to the React app. So that's it about Airflow 3.1, a lot of exciting new features. Take care and I see you for another video.